right? In the last video, I talked about how to calculate the charge on a free atom. Uh, and that is an atom that is not bonded to any other atoms, just an atom with a given number of electrons on it. And how to calculate the charge on that atom, I said it basically boils down to the number of valence electrons in the neutral atom, in the case of carbon, which I've drawn here, which is four. And from four, it's always gonna be four for carbon, we're gonna subtract the number of valence electrons on a, the given atom in question, I guess we should say this, uh, if we wanna calculate the number of, we're always, when we're talking about charge and calculating charge, we, we always have an, an atom that we need to calculate the charge for. So this, this bracket, the second uh, part of the equation is for the atom that we wanna calculate the formal charge or the, uh, the, the charge on the atom for. Okay, so in the case of this carbon, we said that this was neutral because it had uh, four electrons around it and we had this carbon, which we said was positively charged because it has three, so four minus three gives you one. And four minus five, in this case, it actually has a negative charge on the carbon. Now, in organic chemistry, it's extremely, extremely rare to deal with situations where we have carbon not bonded to anything else, no bonds to any other atoms, okay? Most of the time, you're gonna be dealing with situations where, I should say, the, the vast majority of the time, you're gonna be dealing with situations where carbon is bonded to another atom. For example, carbon can bond with um, four atoms of hydrogen and form uh, this molecule CH4 or methane. And so the question is, how do we calculate the charge on the atoms of each of, of the atoms in methane um, in this new situation, the situation where they're sharing electrons? So they don't have the electrons all themselves like they would in a free atom. They're sharing of electrons, okay? So we're gonna have to modify our, our formula. So we're gonna change a few things here because we wanna know the charge on the atom in a molecule. And it's going to, um, not gonna, one thing about this formal charge, and we're gonna call this actually, I've just said it, so we may as well use it. We're gonna call this formal charge. Okay, we're gonna call this, this is called formal charge, the charge on an atom in a molecule. And we're gonna do this calculation for each of the four hydrogens and the carbon here. We're gonna to have to modify this, this calculation, not this part, because the number of electrons in the neutral atom, this is not gonna change. Um, but what we have to do is adjust for the way that we're accounting for the electrons on each atom. Um, so in the case of hydrogen, and maybe we should look at hydrogen first, Hydrogen, it's, hydrogen has two electrons um, that it's involved with. It has two electrons that uh, you can, it can count to itself. However, it does not have those electrons all to itself. In fact, it is sharing. So it is, um, there's a covalent bond between the hydrogen and the carbon. So hydrogen is sharing um, this pair of electrons. So it's sharing this pair of electrons. That means that even though there's two electrons on the hydrogen, uh, it, it only has a 50% custody, if you will, of, of those two hydrogens. So just like you know, you might have a father and a, a, and a mother having two kids, um, they share those kids between each other. If they had to divide them up equally, they would each have one child to themselves. And so in this case, it's sort of the same situation in which they, they share, but they, they don't own. Um, the number of electrons which hydrogen actually has to itself is in this case one. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna modify this formula a little bit. We are gonna say it's subtracting one half of the number of the bonding electrons. Okay, one half the number of bonding electrons. So in the case of hydrogen here, so for hydrogen, it's equal to, now the number of, uh, let's do it down here. So hydrogen, the number of valence electrons in the neutral atom of hydrogen is one. And the number of bonding electrons it has, well, we said it has two, okay? So one half times two is gonna give us an answer of one minus one, which is actually going to be zero. And so this zero, this number we get zero is actually the formal charge of the hydrogen in this 
uh, bond here. So we can draw a little zero, and most of the times you won't see that, but I mean, just for our purposes, we've done it. And you can actually do it for each of the other hydrogens around, and, and they will, through the identical calculations, each end up with a charge of zero. We can also do it for carbon. Um, so for carbon, we can have, um, we just change, we have to add up the number of bonding, bonding electrons. So in the case of carbon, it's going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, so it's going to be one half times eight. Okay. And the number of valence electrons in the neutral atom, we're not talking about hydrogen anymore. We're talking about carbon. So for carbon, it's going to be four. So four minus one half times eight is going to give you four minus minus four. Okay, one half times eight is four, which is actually going to give you zero. So the charge on CH four here is actually also zero. Okay, good. So let's adjust things a little bit. Let's look at a um, different molecule here. Um, let's say that we have. CH3 and let's you know we know that the, the there is a positive charge uh, on this molecule but we're just going to calculate each of the different atoms in turn and, and make sure that we know where to actually put the positive charge because that's one of the key features of formal charge is that it is an accounting mechanism for chemistry it helps us to account and tell us exactly what atom of the molecule bears that charge okay that's the whole point of formal charge, is to sort of assign that charge to, to one atom. Even though the molecule itself has a plus charge, we have to assign this charge to one atom in particular. So if we look at the hydrogen, again, we're dealing with the same situation. So hydrogen, it has one valence electron in a neutral atom, and we're gonna subtract half number of bonding electrons, which is gonna be two, so one half times two, which is, again, gonna be just just one, so one minus one is gonna give us zero again. So these hydrogens are all zero. And so our hydrogens are all neutral, which means, you know, figure out from here that there are carbon, something weird is gonna be going on with our carbon. So let's do the calculation for carbon. Carbon always, for this number, we'll always be using four, we'll always avail four valence electrons in the neutral atom. And the number of bonding electrons we have here is, well, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have minus one half times six equals four, minus three equals one. Okay, so far so good. So our charge here on our carbon is gonna have plus one or just plus. All right, let's deal with one other case here. So let's say that we have this molecule and it's bonded to three hydrogens. So hopefully it shouldn't be too hard to see that the hydrogens um, on this case are actually gonna, we're gonna do the exact same calculation we did before. So it's actually gonna be one minus one half times two for each of them. So it's gonna be one minus one or zero. So each of these hydrogens are neutral. Now where things get interesting is with our carbon. So our carbon has three um, bonds. So well, first of all, let's just talk about its valence electrons. So it has four valence electrons. That's always gonna be the case. Now it has three bonds to hydrogen. So it's gonna be one half times six electrons. But you notice that we haven't accounted for all the electrons using this formula. That's right, there is an extra pair of electrons that is still part of the carbon that is not involved in a bond. And the other thing is that the carbon's not sharing these electrons with any other atoms. So in contrast to the case where it's sharing electrons with the hydrogens, it actually has this pair of electrons all to itself, okay? And because these electrons are also uh, negatively charged, we can put a negative in front of this, we're gonna to have to add a new term to our formal charge calculation. We're gonna to have to put a new um, term in here and it's also gonna be negative. And it's going to be, uh, and if I can fit it all in here, unbonded electrons. So number 
of unbonded electrons. In this case, we have two unbonded electrons on the carbon. Okay, so there's a mixture of bonding and uh, unbonded or non-bonded electrons on this carbon, and, and that also is going to have an effect on the formal charge. So in this case, we've got two. So four minus one half times six, so let's just expand this out, four minus three, okay, minus two, it's gonna give us minus one, okay, in total. So there's actually gonna be, this negative charge is actually assigned to the carbon. It's got a charge of negative one. So that's how to apply formal charge to simple example of carbon bonded to uh, various numbers of atoms. This formal charge formula is the formula that you can apply for calculating formal charge of, of any atom uh, that you care to look at in a molecule. So that's how we adopt the charge calculation to how to, how to calculate the charges of atoms in a molecule.